Okay, we've got a lovely hike for you now. Uh, I've done this several times. I haven't got the data on it right now, but I do know it doesn't take, certainly doesn't take all afternoon or hours and hours and hours. It starts in this sort of public park area, just in the north of Corfacan, and there's plenty of car parking just on the front there. You can park at a diagonal. And what you have to do, there's a sort of secret start to the hike. And uh, if you walk out to the public park, it really is a little secret. And also this, this hike has another secret to it at about the halfway point, which I'll show you and tell you more about as we get there. But you go over the old rickety bridge. Obviously, we've had some, some rains in recent uh, weeks. And we have a very, very hard start to what is quite a nice short hike. All right, there's no warm up. There's no getting used to it. It's out of the garden and then straight up. There's no amenities on this hike. I should stand still really, I'll be out of breath. There are no amenities on this hike at all. There's no toilets. There's plenty of shops in Corfagan itself. We're right by the right main road, but we leave it very quickly. Um, best time of day to complete the hike. If you go first thing in the morning, you'll get the sunrise coming over the Oman Sea, which is very nice, I've done that. And then if you do it last thing at night, what you'll do, you'll climb this in the sun and you'll descend in the shade, west being over there. Uh, because I'm a bit of an idiot, I decided to go up at midday. So uh, no idea the temperature, but it's always nice to keep warm. All right, so as I say, straight up, I'll let the camera do the talking for the time being. And this is quite now rutted as a result of those rains. I've got the Garmin watch working as well, so that I'll be able to give you accurate data on the entire hike. As I said, straight out the gardens, you're into a steep climb. It's only about, as I remember it, 15 minutes or so of hard climbing. Then you get on the top of the ridge, top of the mountain, top of the hill. And then it's very pleasant. OK, then about 10 minutes into the climb and uh, heart rates up, as you would imagine. And so I say the first point of interest you've probably seen the Oman Sea over there. Oh, gonna throw. That's the thing with the rains. The trials are not quite as obvious as they were before. But to be honest, that was my fault, not the trials' fault. And then we've got these old ruins here. I have no idea what they're ruins of. This is nice and round. Looks like some sort of, let's have a look, some sort of fortification. Yeah, look at this. For sure, a watchtower, isn't it? Defending Corfacan to the south. That stretches right straight up to the north, Dibba, Oman, etc. etc. That sea looks mighty inviting. I won't be swimming today. Uh, I mean, that's more or less the top of the ridge. As I said, about 15 minutes of climbing. I won't be too far away from that. Let's plod on up. Although the trail, this film is being made in August, about two weeks after the bad rains that the uh, UAE experienced. And the trail is quite destroyed, but to be honest, we're hiking. And so it's easily 
with a bit of caution, a bit of due care and attention, it's easily, uh, it's easily passable, let's be honest. And we've got a lovely set of steps here. I can see the top of the ridge. That's where we're heading to. Okay, and here we are. Up on what is the highest point of this hike. Uh, how long has it taken me to get here? I'm guessing certainly under 20 minutes. And that's messing around with the camera a little bit and stopping at that, uh, that ruin. Uh, height, 132 meters. We didn't quite start at sea level, but one thing's for sure, we are going to go down to sea level. I will once again has, hazard a guess that we started about 15 metres altitude. I've got the Garmin data for later, which I'll include in this film or in the description. Look at this. Like I say, come up here first thing in the morning. The sunrise over there. Uh, wonderful. You can see Corfagam Port. To the south, Corfu Can and its beach over there. Uh, yeah, I love it. And they don't give me a coffee for this, but just at the southern end of this beach here, if you drive past where you're parked, eventually get to the beach and get to the end of it. There's a lovely little coffee shop right down on the beach. And uh, yeah. Sundowners, where I come from, means something completely different. But have a nice coffee or smoothie sundowner down there. Wonderful. Okay, now the descent. We're going all the way down to the beach, down to sea level. Uh, I did see some wet beach on the way through, driving through. So I think the tide is a little bit low. There's not much tide here in this part of the world. Uh, but down to sea level. And I look forward to seeing you down there. Okay then, starting the big descent down to the beach. Let's see if we can actually see where we're going. Yeah, I know where we're going to. We're going down there. You see where that green is? I don't know if you'll see it on the camera. Now this has been washed away quite a lot. So uh, I'm sure that the uh, municipality will come and tidy it up at some point. But uh, in the meantime, you just take care and I'll try not to uh, fall. Yeah, starting the descent now, love it. I love it. I don't even know the name of this hike, but uh, I suppose we'll have to call it the, um, the Corfacan Coastal Trail with special secret. How about that? With its own special secret. But after today, there won't be any secret. Ah, remember that coffee shop I told you about? Well, it's not there. Shows you how long ago was the last time. I bet it's about a year since I've been here. Oh, that is such a shame. Disregard everything I said about going to have sundowners down there. But I can't believe that they won't reopen. That's a brand new road. That was just a, that was just a, uh, a rough beach, stony jeep trail. That's all that was. Listen, I've got to concentrate here descending. So I'll see you in a bit. Well, what about this for a walk? I absolutely love this trail. Right, so we're well on our way down the descent now towards the final destination, which is that beach down there, that little cove. Don't really call it a beach. It's not much sand. That's a beach for sure. I love this descent that winds away in front of us now. Um, yeah, you can actually see Corfu Can waterfalls directly in front. And I don't know if you'll pick up on the uh, camera, but there's a new restaurant only opened a year or so ago. Right on top. Uh, I've been up there and we'll certainly make a film about that. But uh, if you want to get a very nice coffee. Good place. Fantastic views. It's actually a little bit too high. The views become hazy because uh, you're so high up there. I often say this when you go to somewhere like the Eiffel Tower. 
you're going to go to the top. You're going to go to the top of the Burj Khalifa because that's the point. That's the Instagram shot. But the best views on the Eiffel Tower are actually on the lower platforms where you can actually make out what you're looking at. And uh, same with the, uh, the Burj Khalifa. The, the views from lower down, I think, are more, are more interesting. I don't know about stunning because you get that, that feeling like the building's going to fall over and you're going to die within a few seconds. So Burj Khalifa is quite different. Uh, a bit like this hike, I'm rambling now. But look at this for a descent, love it. Okay guys, we're nearly, nearly down at the beach where we're, we're gonna uh, be heading to, which is our halfway point. Just let me show you here at this point now. And of course, everywhere I go, all the hikes, all the walks, all the segways, everything's only as accessible as it's allowed, as is permitted. I'm not giving you any authority to go into any of these places. I don't want some emails coming off from the council saying, oh, come on, uh, the English explorer, he said it's okay to come here. No, no, no. If it's okay to come here, come here. If it's not, don't go here. But this is called Heart Beach. Okay, this is called Heart Beach. And as that currently stands, that's closed to the public, but a lot of the public do come there. And they're clearly building some sort of, must be a coffee shop, ice cream shop. Um, that's there. I mean, they should develop it as well. You've got the Oceanic Hotel, which has got its own private beach and it's very nice in there. So yeah, you can actually walk down a trail here, down to Heart Beach. But as I say, it's called Heart Beach because when you look at the beach from, uh, from Corfu Can itself, you'll see somebody's uh, with, with stones and paint, I think. They've etched in a picture of a heart. I think it's got the UAE flag within the heart. But it's very, very faded now. You can't see me, but I'm really here. Don't worry. Yeah, so Heart Beach, as I understand, that's closed to the public. I've been taken to the beach we're going to by locals and certainly where the, the hike starts out to that public garden area uh, there's nothing to insinuate or to say that we're not permitted to walk here or hike here all right so the final descent now into what will be our halfway point uh, it's quite steep. I remember it's straight and st steep. And the thing with this walk, because there's so many lefts and turns and ups and downs and, and things like that, you, um, I'm into a lovely breeze now, but up there, there were some places where there's absolutely no breeze and it's red hot. So a lovely beach coming in from the, a lovely beach, a lovely breeze coming in from the beach. Uh, I will concentrate because I want to be famous for exploring, not for falling over. And then I'll show you that little secret. Do you remember the old magpie song? Something for a secret never to be told. Well, it's not going to be a secret in a few minutes because I'm going to announce it to the world. Now, my wife often tells me when I've got nothing to say, I should say nothing at all. And ordinarily, that would be great advice. But there's so much to talk about here. But... Um, I'll let you just take in these views and the scenery for yourself. Now that descent was quite badly rutted as a result of those rains, which are now a couple of weeks ago. And it's quite understandable the amount of water we had, three days of continuous torrential rain. And all that rainwater wants to do is get to the lowest point and the lowest point is sea level. So I don't blame the water. But uh, I think we were quite lucky in a way. So there's two places we're going to go to here. Let's go and have a look at this uh, beach hut here. Or beach hut. Um, this shelter. We're at halfway now on the journey. We'll go up first. No, we won't go up first. <laughs> I have been up here before. But... Uh, to say with this broken step ladder you can easily get up there but that's not the purpose of my journey and there's lots of things you could do up there you could even have a little rest have a snooze whatever you might want to do up there okay so let's have a drink of water 
the journey is only halfway done and to go back up we're going to go back up there uh, that's more than halfway uh, sorry we're not halfway yet it's more than halfway to go back home beautiful uh, excuse me I forget I got a microphone on and <laughs> the video facing me now Again, it's a bit, a little bit rough now. It's windy. Uh, I don't know. Here's a question for you. I'll answer it straight away afterwards. So don't run off and go and ask somebody or go straight to Google. But what makes waves? What makes waves? And if you're shouting at the TV now, shouting at the computer monitor, wind, wind, wind. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. Yeah. So it's quite windy, and therefore we got waves. But when it's still here, you can sometimes see. Uh, I've often seen giant turtles. Uh, sea turtles, they're lovely. Not giant turtles, but sea turtles. And I have on several occasions seen vipers down here. So maybe that's what this is for here, if you're going to sleep down here. I'm not at all sure if you're allowed to, but it's a little barbecue area. Seems like a lot of hard work to bring all the charcoal down, all the wood down here, all the meat down here. I'd have, my, have your dinner in a restaurant and then uh, just come back and put your deck chair here. That's what I would recommend. Uh, Maybe that's, I wouldn't say sleep there in the rocks because those vipers are deadly. What is this? Oh, I thought that was actually a viper skin, but it's not. Right, the official word of warning, this is officially no access. A complete disclaimer from me about this. Do not come to this area. I can't be any clearer than that. Okay, several reasons why. One, it's dangerous. Two, when the tide is higher, it can get shut off. Three, when the tide is high, it's slippery. Four, there's no telephone signal. Five, it's dangerous. Six, if you get into trouble here, no one will hear you scream. Sounds like a film. Seven. Uh, I don't know. Seven. Eight. It's dangerous. Nine. Don't go up here. And the tenth reason is, if for any reason you do come up here, be very, very careful. If you want to break those rules. There's often as well at high tide a bit of war, a bit of oil on the rocks up there. Look at all these crabs. I don't know how slippery that is. That's actually all right. Wow.
Well, there's good news and bad news. Well, no, in actual fact, there's good news and good news. No such thing as bad news. And uh, the good news is that I made it back. I did a bit of sea level girdling. And although I said the tide was out, the tide was a lot further in than uh, when I was here before. And uh, there's a little archway there. I'll put a, I'll put a picture in the film. I've got a, I'm sure I've got a photo of it. And one of two things, either I didn't reach it far enough and I would tell you absolutely now, do not go further than I went. Don't even go as far as I went. And there is a real distinct possibility that two, uh, it's disintegrated. Absolutely, those rains have significantly moved everything. Talking about moving things, look at that. Honestly, it's a pet hate of mine, I hate it. And I have got into numerous arguments. Well, they're not arguments, because I tell people and they realize they know they're wrong. I say, why have you just dropped that bottle? Why have you dropped that rubbish? Why have you done that? Why have you left that? And they immediately apologise and pick it up. No one says, because it's a good idea, or because uh, I'm not able to, or because um, some legitimate, genuine reason. The only reason you leave your rubbish here is because you are lazy and you can't be asked. So take it home with you. All the stuff on the beach I don't care about. Well, I do care about, but that's coming from the sea. But that's just laziness. I know there's a drum there, but it's not a municipality bin. There's no one coming down to clear that up. I would suggest it's a health hazard now. Not that many people come down here. As you can tell, it's a bit of a bugbear of mine. Put it in your pocket, take it home. And that expression has never been more apt. Take only memories, leave only footprints. Take only memories and leave only footprints. The only problem is with Perrier, it is a little bit gassy. The uh, stone that I bought to sit on was brought in from outside, when I say outside, out in the sun. And it's red hot, honestly, you could fry an egg on it. It's burning my backside. Very nice biscuits. Fantastic water. Now I've got quite a, quite a hard walk up back onto that ridge and then a nice easy 10 minute descent down to the, uh, the truck. Oh, yeah. Always cover up as well. I don't care your skin type, that thing up there, that sun has got some significantly harmful rays that come out of it. Okay guys, well on my way back now, I've ascended the beach, from the beach, and it was only when I was just doing that little bit down there, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I think you saw me walking down, so it was only then you get realising actually, although this walk is quite short in distance and possibly in time, it's actually incredibly difficult. There's hardly any rest, as in nice flat, a couple of kilometres just to stretch out and Basically, it's either up or down, and when it's up, it's up, and when it's down, it's down. Oh, if only I could think of some sort of uh, nursery rhyme about the grand old Duke of York. So, who's this, who's this walk for? In the morning and in the evening, it's probably for fit families. And I'll let you use your discretion how fit your family is. Obviously, you've always got to get medical advice before you do anything that's possibly dangerous for your body, strenuous. So consult a, a doctor or a medical professional first, if you're not sure. Uh, coming up here at lunchtime on your own, well, the question is, who on earth would do that? Who on earth, in their right mind, would come here in the height of the summer on a day with very little breeze, right, the sun is directly overhead, I'll get the temperature but as I say it's hot.
just had a message come through on WhatsApp. Uh, come through to my wrist. And it's from Ben, who's a... Uh, let me catch my breath. And it's from Ben, who's lives in a couple of places in the UK, mid North Wales, and he's got a family house down in uh, Oxford, Oxfordshire. I won't give you the full address, but the postcode is... Oh, no, no. And uh, he's just sent me a message saying, how's things? Obviously he doesn't know that I am up here. Or maybe he does, because he knows who, what I'm like. But uh, got me thinking about Ben. And uh, he's just had an ice bath installed into his garden. Obviously, UK had unprecedented temperatures, heat wave, global warming. If you believe Donald Trump's not happening, apart from people sat in record temperatures with no rainfall, crops are failing, people are dying of starvation, heat exhaustion, stroke, that sort of stuff. But it's all right, nothing's happening. It's just normal. But he's got himself an ice bath installed. And uh, right now, I can think of a few things better than sat, oh, sat in an ice bath. Thanks for that uh, thought, Ben. I'll be in touch later. OK, you're not going to see for sure, and he's gone now, but just down there, let's just say you can... I'm sure you won't be able to see it, absolutely 100% sure, but I could see it to the uh, visible eye. It's sort of a reef of stones, a reef of rocks just uh, out in the sea there, and there was a turtle swimming around on the surface there. It was very distinctive when it was there. It just looks like a, a rock on the surface almost. And then it sort of fades away to nothing. And that's when you realize if you're down on the level and you see the turtles, you see the shout, the roundness to them, you know, it's very distinctive when you're close. But here, if you know what you're looking for and you can see them, it's not infrequent. So don't be surprised, bring your cameras if you see a sea turtle. Right, come on, let's plod home. The journey of a thousand steps, it starts with the first. Ah, lucky people. There are some people, some people down there on the beach. Lovely, up on the ridge now. Hard work's really done. This ridge actually, this summit here, there's a tiny descent 10 metres afterwards, back up to another summit. But uh, for all intents and purposes now, the hard work is done. And take it from me, look, there's the next summit. Did I say 10 metres? Wow, I wish I didn't lie so easily. Uh, take it from me, this is no time to be walking. Mad dogs and Englishmen, mad dogs and English explorers go out in the midday sun. Okay, last climb up, then it's all down. There's that uh, old antiquity. I don't mean me, I mean the stones. I've drank my last water. Oh. I've lost a trail here. I wonder if this is the same stand. 
Oh, it's a different set of stones. Oh yeah. Right, here comes the descent. Yeah, I've drunk my last water. How much water and food you drink is up to you. But there's so many rules of thumb. I'm not going to get involved in that because each and every one of us is different. However, without a doubt, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So I bring a minimum of three litres of water today. In actual fact, I'm a bit of a liar. I bought two, two Perrier's, one, two green bottles sitting on the wall. And if both green bottles should accidentally, should accidentally get drunk, there'll be no green bottles left in the rucksack. So I needed to bring more. I'll be okay getting back. It's only a couple of minutes ago I had my last drink. But uh, again, it's those what ifs. What if I had a problem? What if someone else had a problem? Uh, there's one thing that is not predictable, and that is hiking in adventurous outdoor conditions like this. The only thing you can predict is something will go wrong of some sort. Okay, so we saw another ruin, another relic on the top of the ridge, which I didn't see on the way up. Uh, and I confused it with this one when we were coming past it a couple of times. So there are at least two of these stone where watchtowers, I presume. There are at least two of these en route. I can hear the white noise of the road now, it's horrible, but it's also quite nice knowing that I'm nearly back. Feet are burning as you might imagine. And maybe the last bit of information that I would give you today. Uh, if you want any advice on shoes, <clears throat> I remember having a conversation with Saeed uh, right when I first came out here five or six years ago, five years ago. And uh, he said, which are the best shoes? And I'm not going to mention any brand names that are not fit for purpose here in the Middle East in the extreme heats. But I had an extremely comfortable pair of walking trail shoes, which honestly were like wearing slippers. They were soft, flexible, had support in the right areas, Achilles tendon areas, just wonderful. The best shoe I'd ever worn. I'd wear it like a pair of slippers. I'd wear it to bed if I could, if I was allowed to. And uh, they were wonderful. I said to Saeed, without a doubt, try these brother. And he got a pair. And then, I'm gonna say about a week or two weeks later, we met again and he said, what are these? And he got a pair and the exact same thing had happened to his pair the, that had happened to my pair. And they completely melted. The sole was coming away from the upper, completely destroyed because of the heat. So since then I've experimented uh, with numerous different brands. And without a doubt, I could say this unequivocally, the only brands I will walk in here in the Middle East, I'm getting nothing for saying it, are the Adidas Terex. Both my wife and I have got them, and my sister's got a pair now. She got them for what was a Christmas present belated because of COVID. Uh, yeah, they're great. They've got like a continental rubber sole, uh, and they don't melt. They do not melt. Adidas Terex. They're available all over the UAE. And, and as uh, if by magic, less than, I don't know, one minute, one minute of telling you about Adidas Terex. There is a victim of the UAE heat. Uh, I'm telling you guys, Terex is the way. Okay, very close now to finishing. Just a minute or so of big step descending because of the erosion. Ugh, big steps now, what a mistake. Walking on the moon. So, uh, great walk. How long would I give myself to do this walk? Well, I think you're going to say minimum 
hour and a quarter if you're fit to get there and back without stops two and a half comfortable give yourself a bit of a safety net give yourself three hours water and drink three hours tell someone where you're going all the standard safety tips I have made a film that gives you some advice so I do urge you to check that one out and also what I was saying about rubbish take kindly memories leave any footprints uh, whoever left this sneaker so shame on you shame I didn't catch you like I say the only thing you're ashamed of is that you get caught it's not that you're doing it back over the bridge hope there's no trolls fantastic well done great walk oh this is going to be lovely I don't know if you saw that as well I'll walk this way but there's an Indian roller one of my two or three favourite favourite birds here well not just in the UAE all over the world the bright, bright blue the turquoise oh he's gone this grass feels like a magic carpet absolute soft underfoot I was being a bit critical about global warming earlier but one thing's for sure I am going to crank up the air conditioning on that car any second now bye everybody